Well, good morning. My name is Audrey Scanlon. I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Central Pennsylvania, making this video for you on October 25th in the year 2024. I'm down here in my prayer shack, as we call it, um, a place where I like to come to read and rest and reflect, and on this morning to make a video for you. I'll give you a little tour of the prayer shack. You may remember that this was a structure that we had built uh, for my sabbatical as a place of retreat to come down and, and do the uh, work that God had given me to do in the time that I was able to enjoy writing and reflecting and praying and resting in this space. I'm gonna turn the camera around. I hope it doesn't make you dizzy. <laughs> this is a very small structure. It's only eight by 10 feet. There's a tiny little wood burning stove in it. When I got down here this morning, it was 38 degrees. I've been down here for about, oh, I don't know, 15 minutes. And, and thanks to the wood stove, I'm up to 65 degrees already. Um, I've made myself a cup of tea. I can boil some water on top of that little stove and it's just a cozy place to be. So let me share a little view with you. Let's see how this works. I have a small desk that I work from, a little junk corner. Every house has a junk corner for storing your broom and your water and things like that. That's the front door. Over here we have a shelf. It has some decorative items, candles, a little teapot down here, my yoga mat and my wood box. I hope you can see my little wood stove here that keeps me warm. It's really a very simple space, but it suits me just <laughs> very well as I, as I do my work down here. We've been talking so much in our diocese about reunification and our future together. And you probably know that at our convention last weekend, we did approve reunification with the Diocese of Bethlehem to be effective on January 1st in the year 2026. And we have lots and lots of good work ahead of us in that process. So if you're interested in being part of the working groups as we uh, begin to really flesh out and look at how we're going to do this work together. I invite you to go to our diocesan website and fill out that application form to serve in one of the 10 or 12 different working groups that we have developed. Another little commercial before I uh, talk with you about the subject for today is that on November 15th and 16th, we'll be hosting the Reverend Jay Sidebotham, who is the founder of a process called Renewal Works. And he'll be talking with us about his new book, which is all about spiritual vitality of congregations. And so we invite you to this Vestry Vitality Day uh, you can join online or in person on the 15th of November on Friday. That'll be based out of St. John's in Lancaster. Or on the 16th of November, that will be at All Saints Hershey. There is no cost for this. We're inviting teams of people, clergy and lay leaders, to come from their parishes to do this good work of learning together. So I hope to see you there. Now, I thought that maybe in the next few weeks, between now and the beginning of Advent, we could um, take a little bit of a different focus. I like doing series of things on our videos. And I thought it would be fun to look at some important Bible stories that have been important for me and my formation, or important maybe in the life of the church for where we are right now. I thought this morning that I would share with you, going way back to the beginning, um, one of my earliest Bibles that was given to me when I was in fourth grade, this is Good News for Modern Man. This is just the uh, New Testament in a translation of the Bible called Today's English Version. But it's what was given to me. <laughs> you can see my little childish handwriting in fourth grade. Apparently, my Sunday school teacher's name was Mrs. Barnes. That was at St. James Church in Farmington, Connecticut. And the inside of my Bible, which she gave to me, she wrote, 
to Audrey, Romans 8.31. I guess she had picked out a special verse for each of us. And this is not the Bible story I want to share with you today, but I'll tell you what Romans 8.31 says. Romans 8.31. Faced with all of this, what can we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? It's been a passage that I've uh, lived with some curiosity into through my life, not knowing exactly what Mrs. Barnes had in mind when she wrote that. But it is true that uh, having God on our side is indeed a good thing. Now, the Bible story I picked to start off this six-week series is one of my favorite Bible stories. And I think that the reason that it grabbed me, especially in this Bible when I was in fourth grade, is um, because of the illustrations. The illustrations were done by a French woman. Uh, this Bible was printed in the 60s, I believe. And the line drawings were prepared by Mademoiselle Annie Valaton. So here from the fifth chapter of Luke, it's a picture that struck me all those years ago. I hope you can see this. It's the story of the man being lowered down through the roof on a mat by his friends to be healed by Jesus. And you can see in the cottage or the house, there's a great crowd uh, and then they've removed the tiles from the ceiling to bring the man down into the space to meet Jesus. Let me read to you just a short part of this story, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. One day when Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there who'd come from every town in Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. The power of the Lord was present for Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a bed. They tried to take him into the house and lay him before Jesus. Because of the crowd, however, they could find no way to take him in. So they carried him up on the roof, made an opening in the tiles, and let him down on his bed in the middle of the group in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw how much faith they had, he said to the man, your sins are forgiven you, my friend. And the story goes on. Jesus gets in a little bit of a um, dialogue with the Pharisees around his healing. But what really struck me as, as a child about this story and what continues to strike me first is the adventure and the ingenuity of, of taking somebody up to the roof and removing the tiles, how committed they were to getting this friend of theirs in front of Jesus for healing. So first, the adventure of it all appeals to me. Uh, the ingenuity, the creativity of it appeals to me. But the, the devotion of the friends, the devotion of the friends, the sense of community that's present in healing, um, the importance of community is what really, really hits home for me with this story. You may have heard me preach before that I think that Christianity is a team sport. Uh, we're called to uh, worship God and to do God's work in community. And so there's something really poignant for me about how this man was um, not left outside by himself to struggle to push his way in to see Jesus, but that his friends um, found a way with him. And what's interesting to me, I, don't, I haven't checked other translations, but in this translation, Jesus says, when Jesus, or the, Luke says, when Jesus saw how much faith they had, he said to the man, your sins are forgiven you. How much faith they had. And so even Jesus recognizes the power of community and friendship and devotion. So that's the first Bible story out of, I think we're going to do this for six weeks or so, that I'd like to share with you for your own reflection. How have you been a friend to another in their time of need? How do you depend on others? 
how do you exercise um, your practice of Christianity as, as uh, within community? Some things to think about today. I thought since this was a story about healing of the sick, and since this coming Sunday we'll be um, encountering blind Bartimaeus along the road, who is also healed, but maybe not quite as well embraced by his crowd, uh, I thought we could pray one of the prayers for healing in our prayer book. This is a prayer for strength and confidence. It's on page 459. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve all those who are sick and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, until next time, I'm going to enjoy my cup of tea and the warmth of the fire here. Um, do a little bit of journaling and then get back up to the house to get on with my day. May God bless you and guide you and keep you always.